And hello, I am Steve Endo, and today I ask the question, do you need a powerful PC for Business Central development? Let's talk about that. So this idea topic started with a tweet the other day. I was doing something on my laptop and I... <laughs> It was not going well, as you can see from this task manager chart. And I just posted, um, the lesson I learned was buy more laptop than, I, than you think you need. Um, at the time, this laptop seemed perfectly fine. It was more than adequate. It's been working great, but I'm now trying to do new things with it. And as you can see, CPU is slammed at 100%, memory, is essentially fully consumed, um, eight gigs of RAM. And it kind of worked for what I was trying to do, but clearly it's highly constrained and the fan was spinning, it was getting hot, and it just wasn't suited for that task. Now, for context, uh, because I didn't provide any context, it was just more of a, you know, a, a joke tweet, um, joking about you know, the constraints of having an older laptop. This is a 2017 ThinkPad. And so it's over three years old. I bought it, I think in spring 2017. And this is the X1 Carbon. And the reason I chose that model was number one, portability. Thin, light, portable, travel, put it in a backpack, use it on a plane, hotel, whatever, while waiting somewhere. 100% number one priority was portability. Uh, you know, um, it's specs, hardware, speed, everything else. I didn't need much, and I'll explain why. That was all secondary. And so it's over three years old, so nothing wrong with that. Uh, it was a Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM. And the reason I went with a Core i5 is because when I previously went, I think, with an i7, uh, I, throttling issues, thermal issues, fan constantly going. So I hope that the, uh, you know, downgraded processor might be a little cooler and quieter. I don't know if that rationale made sense. And eight gigabytes was the maximum I believe I could get at the time. Might have been 16, but at the time I got eight. And the caveat is that soldered on RAM. That is non-upgradable RAM. You buy it, it's on the motherboard, no upgrades allowed. So that's why I'm constrained the way I am, and that's fine. Now, to add context, where is this, uh, what is this task manager showing? It is showing me doing a test with Microsoft Teams, doing a, a call with my desktop, just a test call, using a Elgato CamLink 4K USB video capture card. So rather than use the absolutely horrible webcam that is on the ThinkPad, I plugged in the cam link, I attached it to a small point and shoot camera, and I was getting the video feed from that to participate in the test Teams call. And I'm testing NDI functionality, the NDI output functionality of Teams, which is brand new. And the goal of that is to see what it's going to take and how is it going to work if I do mobile live streaming and also testing the new NDI features of Teams so that I can capture those NDI streams in vMix. So that's the context. And it appears that the Elgato Cam Link capture card, uh, whatever is going on with it and Windows, uh, it requires some CPU horsepower in order to get that video feed and do whatever conversion is necessary to get it in the Teams. So um, slam the CPU at 100%. RAM is maxed out, and that's basically with Teams and the Chrome web browser. I wasn't really doing anything else, and the laptop was basically melting down at that point. So that's the context. But interestingly, without context, this is what happens on Twitter. Um, uh, understandably, I tweet a lot about Business Central and Business Central development and Docker and all those other things. So without any context, you know, people make assumptions, say, oh, Steve must be trying to do BC development on his laptop. 
Well, obviously that was not the case at all, but um, it spawned this entire thread on Twitter talking about, well, here's what you should do to run BC on a laptop and Docker and how much RAM do you need and what kind of, and so it went somewhere that I, I had not anticipated or intended at all. And here you see several comments uh, discussing what does it take to develop with Business Central? What are the minimum requirements to do BC development? And then there's just BC development, then there's the whole conversation around Docker and how many containers are you gonna run? So it can go lots of places. So I thought, okay, well, do I need to upgrade my laptop to support BC development? And I'm like, okay, well, what does that really mean? Um, and then I saw um, AJ Kaufman posted, just coincidentally posted a photo of a new Dell Precision workstation laptop that he bought with just totally loaded, super high-end specs. So I looked at that and <laughs> it's a little shocking how much these cost. So I, f I wasn't able to find the same specs that he did initially on the Dell website. So I then went to Lenovo's website and specced out. It's the ThinkPad P1 laptop. I guess that's their workstation class laptop. And if you max it out with an i9 and uh, 64 gigs and um, uh, two one terabyte SSDs and on-site support, et cetera, basically fully loaded, no, no real software other than Windows. It is a $5,200 laptop, and Lenovo regularly has coupons, which they seem to have a perpetual coupon, but this is a Labor Day coupon for $2,000 off, and you come in at $3,100, basically. And uh, AJ sent me a link to the Precision 5550 uh, workstation configuration. I'm still unable to get to those specific specs directly through the Dell website, but apparently there's a way to go through a side channel to get to the specs with the i9 and 64 gigs. And if you configure that with the NVIDIA Quadro, Quadro video card, just like the Lenovo, you come up with a similar total price, $52.65. So around $5,200 for a laptop. Uh, it's staggering. That's a lot of money. And I don't, Dell website claims that I'm getting 2,200 total savings, but the bottom line is $5,200. And presumably if you call them, they'll give you discounts, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know if they'll match the Lenovo price or get close to it. That is a beefy, expensive laptop. And do you really need that? And so the, the conversation, a lot of the conversation on the Twitter thread was around what type of laptop do you need for BC development? So there's a lot of assumptions going on there. And I'm thinking, well, I work from home 95% of the time. I use my desktop with four monitors and a video camera connected to my, physically connected to my network with a gigabit network connection. I don't think I need a three to $5,000 laptop when I'm only mobile, you know, X percent of the time. So, okay, that's interesting. So let's offer some more context. I am a small business. I am one person. I am not a corporation with 100 employees and IT staff and server infrastructure. I have a home office. Everything I need is here. I work here all the time, all day, all morning, all night, from 7 a.m. phone calls with Europe to 10 p.m. phone calls with India, everything in between. Um, afternoon calls with Australia. So this is my world, my home office. I have remote business partners in Europe, Australia, India, across the US, and I work with remote contract developers. So, um, you know, it's highly distributed. I don't have a central office um, and I don't have a paradigm where any like single setup on a laptop is gonna work. So that's just some context for me. And obviously your situation may be completely different. So given this, 
This is what I've been using in the Dynamics GP world for the last 13 years. This isn't something I just cooked up, you know, in the last few months. This is what I've kind of refined and honed with over a decade of work in this business model. So with Dynamics GP, you genuinely need to have a, a server and whatever that constitutes in terms of hardware, you have SQL Server and you have a Dynamics GP client. And in my case, I found that given the development work that I was doing, a Hyper-V server worked best for me. I'm able to set up a dozen different VMs with a dozen different configurations and versions and all sorts of different scenarios for different customers. And that can run on one Hyper-V server. I then do most of my work through my desktop down here. I have zero development tools on my desktop. I do not install Visual Studio. I do not install .NET Dev Tools, no SQL Server, no GP Client, nothing. It is purely a productivity workstation. Now, it's a little higher end for other things that I do unrelated to GP, like video primarily, but it is not specced out for development of Dynamics GP. Now, I then found, well, what if I want to work remotely? Okay, well, I could RDP directly in, but nowadays that is totally not safe to expose RDP ports. So I finally, after trying many other solutions, I invested in a SonicWall VPN appliance. Very expensive, but very reliable. It's been rock solid. So with that VPN appliance, I can have VPN from my phone, from my tablet, from my laptop, and my developers, if they're remote, they can VPN as well and have access to any VM that I, I have running via RDP. So no infrastructure, or excuse me, no endpoint requirements essentially. Any mobile device, any workstation, whatever, as long as you can connect to my VPN and RDP in, you have access to any one of my development environments, you can get work done. So that's worked really well for me. It also allows me to grab a lightweight laptop like my X1 Carbon or my iPad or my iPhone, and I can tether to my iPhone and anywhere I am, I can do work pretty much. Anywhere where I have cell signal and sufficient data speeds, I can VPN in, connect to my server, and get some work done. I'm not nearly as productive as when I'm sitting at my workstation with four monitors here, but and, and a full-size keyboard, but when I'm taking my girls to dance class, I'm sitting outside their dance class on my iPad doing work or on my laptop doing work tethered to my cell phone, and I can get 50 to 100 megabit data speeds on my cell phone while mobile. It's worked great for me over the last several years. So that's what I've been doing. So naturally, this model has worked very well for me. What do I want to do when I do BC development? Well, I tried a whole bunch of different things with Business Central, and what do you know? This is my <coughs> Business Central development setup. Does it look kind of familiar? Only two words have changed in this graphic. Instead of Hyper-V and, let's see, what was it? Hyper-V and VMs, I have Docker and VS Code. So I have a new server that hosts all my Docker, uh, basically Docker Enterprise Edition. Um, and it's running my BC Docker containers. It has VS Code installed everything I want, and that is my dev server. Now, I may learn that there's some limitations or problems, but for now, the experimentation and testing and learning I'm doing, it's worked flawlessly. And guess what? That pops right into my infrastructure exactly the same as my Hyper-V server. I still have my VPN appliance. I still have VPN access via my phone, my laptop, my iPad, and developers, remote contract developers can still VPN and they can RDP to that Docker machine just like they can RDP into my VMs on Hyper-V. It's worked great. My workstation, identical productivity workstation. Whenever I want to do BC Docker work, I RDP into my Docker server. So for me, 
I don't really have a reason to spend three to five thousand dollars on a laptop because that's five percent of my workload or so when I'm remote and just want to get a little bit of work done. So that's some context for me why I'm just not sold on a high-end laptop for BC development. Now, I am interested in a high-end laptop for remote video, remote streaming, and things like capture cards that do utilize CPU, do utilize a GPU, higher-end video card. And hey, if that helps, happens to help me support BC development, great. But that would not be the primary goal of a higher-end laptop because I found this works better for me over the last over more than decade, whether that's working from home, working from the park, working from outside the dance studio where my daughters are taking dance lessons, um, you name it, this has worked for me. Conferences where limited, terrible Wi-Fi, like I don't need to have a super beefy uh, laptop. I, I, as long as I have a decent VPN connection and can RDP into my server, that works better for me. So anyway. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Waldo. As everyone knows, the best computer in the world is a Microsoft computer. So I'm doing everything wrong here. Uh, if, if Twitter is to be believed, I'm doing everything wrong here and I need a Surface Book because everyone needs a Surface Book, right? Or um, what is it? A MacBook. MacBook is the other one. You must have a MacBook or you must have a Surface Book. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what my server is, doesn't matter what my desktop is, doesn't matter what my laptop is, none of it matters. I just need, I could be at a hotel, borrow someone's laptop, I could use my wife's um, MacBook, I could use my kid's Chromebook, it really doesn't matter. And that's the beauty of this model. I don't want to have to worry about a $3,000 sacred laptop or a super fancy sacred desktop. I want all of my endpoints to be as generic and interchangeable as possible. If one of them die, great. I scrap it. I buy something else. So, yes, I do need to have a Windows server, but let me uh, cover a few points before I get into that. But, yes, I have no interest in a Surface Book. I've already suffered dearly with a Surface Pro, and uh, I will never make that mistake again. So what are the benefits for me of this model? And this is for me. Reduce costs. Look, I, I don't have a corporate IT budget. I can't spend $3,000 on a laptop. I can't spend five plus thousand dollars on a Dell PowerEdge beefy server. Um, I'm in the office more than 90% of the times. Um, I want to reduce the endpoint hardware requirements I don't want my developer in um, Ukraine to need to have a $3,000 computer in order to do BC development. As long as he or she has a decent internet connection and VPN, and you know we can work that out remotely, I'd rather have that infrastructure on my end. And that person in Belarus, Ukraine, India, you name it, they can have whatever laptop or desktop they want to use, and it minimizes those endpoint hardware requirements. And Waldo says, but you need internet. Yes, I'll get to that, of course. So I want to reduce the reliance on remote internet. I still need internet, obviously, but it reduces the reliance on that remote internet because all I need is VPN and RDP connectivity. And RDP is not that um, resource intensive. I don't need a 20 megabit internet connection to run RDP. I can run it tethered on my phone. Been doing it for a decade. I've been in the Target parking lot with a customer troubleshooting code on my phone while sitting in my car. I don't need a $3,000 laptop to do that. And all I needed was data plan on my cell phone. So really, the re when I go down to an RDP requirement, the internet requirements are quite low. I want to facilitate remote contract developers. I'm going to need internet one way or another. They're going to need internet. I'm going to need internet. So this drops the bar down to RDP. I, I want to be able to support remote development on my iPad. As iPads improve, 
and whatever mobile tablet you want to use. For me, it's iPad. The iPad has become an incredible device for remote work, and I'm constantly looking for ways to incorporate it rather than a laptop. So that's one of my side goals. And also, I want to be able to support remote administration, and my model allows me to do that for my phone because I always have my phone with me. I don't always have an iPad or a laptop with me, so that works for me. So, um, and another benefit relative to BC, local server automation. So I want to have some centralized processes for automating up, uh, updates to BC images and containers. So I did a video where I, I did the poor man's version of fully automating my BC Docker images and container build. So PowerShell script, it runs every morning for me and automatically builds a new BC container for me. If I have that on a laptop or a desktop, I, I don't want to be tied to those machines. So by centralizing it, I can have all that automation on my server. And whether I'm at my desktop or I'm at the amusement park with my kids because they want to go on roller coasters, you know, in, in the past, back when we could do that, um, I would be at the theme park and I could pull up my laptop and do work without having any heavy work on my laptop. And I want to look into Azure DevOps local build agents. And I, I don't know anything about that yet, but my understanding is I can run that locally on a server. I wouldn't want to run that on my desktop or laptop, so I'll drop it on my beefier Docker BC server. So that's kind of what I'm thinking there. So what does that mean to have a, a Docker server for me? Uh, for me, fortunately, I'm able to build my own Windows PCs. It's relatively simple. I've built dozens of machines. Anyone who's built them knows it's gotten much easier over the years. Uh, you can assemble them, buy the parts online. All the, many of the parts are interchangeable. So I just uh, quoted this one out. If I were to build a brand new one today, this is a desktop class server. This isn't a proper, you know, Dell PowerEdge server. It's a desktop machine, but you can easily install Windows Server on it. And this is an AMD processor with 128 gigs of RAM and two one terabyte high-end SSDs. So with that configuration, case, power supply, I think everything, a CPU cooler, $2,300, top of the line. Now you could save a bit of money. Maybe you don't need 128 gigs. Maybe you only need 64. Maybe you don't need two SSDs. You could go with one save hundreds of dollars, and you could probably easily get under $2,000. And I replace my servers generally every four years. So every four years, I'll spend $2,000 or less because I can reuse the case. I can reuse the power supply, um, you know, easily reuse some of the parts, SSDs for sure. That saves hundreds of dollars. So less than $2,000 a year, I have a brand new server every four years. So that's been my replacement cycle. So with that, um, it's pretty economical for me. So regarding mobility, some people say, well, I need a laptop because I need to be mobile. Understandable. I, I want to work mobile as well. You saw my model. It allows me to be fully mobile with a phone, a tablet, or a PC, a laptop. So how mobile do you need to be? And my question is, yes, you can be mobile and you could have Docker on your laptop, you could have VS Code, you could do your local development, but in the BC Docker world, how mobile can you be if you need to download Docker images and artifacts? You still need an internet connection. I only need an internet connection for my VPN and RDP, but if you're doing Docker on your laptop, um, I, I'm not gonna attempt to mispronounce his name, um, but, he makes an interesting point. He's on the train and he wants to do development and he's kind of joking here, I get that. But if he wants to try to download BC artifacts or an image, that's 10 plus gigs. And, you know, I've tried to do it on hotel Wi-Fi. It was a nightmare. Um, so it, it's just not practical to do that while you're mobile. If you're on a hotel Wi-Fi, if you're on a hotspot, if you're on a train using public Wi-Fi, if you're at airport, you know, using their public Wi-Fi, it's just not. Yes, once you have those images and containers, you can develop locally. But if you want to check in to Git, 
if you want to interact with Azure DevOps, you still need internet. So you're not completely untethered. You're not completely disconnected in many situations. You still need some connectivity at some point. For me, it's VPN and RDP. Uh, if you have Docker locally, it's images, it's containers, it's artifacts, it's DevOps, it's um, you know whatever your source code control system is. So there's trade-offs, um, but that's my philosophy. So why not Azure VM? Why are you even messing around with this antiquated on-premises server concept? Are you a dinosaur? I'd love to use Azure, right? I'd love to use cloud hosted, you know, infrastructure uh, in the cloud. I'd love to not have a server locally. But what's the reality of that? If you tried to use Azure VMs and you wanted something with somewhat decent performance, you're talking hundreds of dollars a month. Bare minimum, my guesstimate is two to three hundred dollars a month. If you want 64 to 128 gigs, and if you want fast storage I.O., I just checked, it looks like you're at, at minimum 500, but realistically $600 a month plus for a beefy Azure VM that's gonna have, um, that's gonna have at least 64 to 128 gigs. And the biggest problem I've seen with Azure VMs is storage IO. It claims to have this fancy processor and premium SSD, but the I.O. is just unbearably slow. And maybe there are people who have $2,000 VMs, $2,000 a month VMs that are super fast and can do great fast production workloads. On a budget, I am absolutely unable to achieve those. And I see Waldo concurs. Azure is extremely expensive for a small business owner like me. And he agrees it is slow. And that has been my experience. If you're copying three gigs to an Azure VM, even between two Azure VMs, it is staggeringly slow compared to my on-prem high-end SSDs over a gigabit network or local copy. There's just absolutely no way I can possibly afford an Azure VM that would have even 50% of the performance I'm getting with a $2,000 desktop class server on-prem. So given that, I've tried. I really want to. It's just not achievable. So with my budget, at least. Uh, unlimited budget, sure. You can have anything you want. But with my budget, Azure is just totally impractical. And let's say I spent $600 a month. That's over $7,000 a year on an at one Azure VM to host Docker and BC development. And that would be great for me, but I could have three desktop class servers a year with that type of money. So what about Windows VPS? I looked into that as well. Could I have a hosted Windows virtual private server? Is that cheaper than Azure? And yes, I it appears to be cheaper, but I'm still looking at minimum $200 a month, more likely $300 per month for what they claim is 64 or 128 um, gigs of RAM and so many virtual processors, whatever that means. I don't know what the performance of that is like. I've never tried it. And all of those appear to have metered data transfer. So X terabytes a month. I don't know whether I would exceed that or not. And if you've ever dealt with a hosting provider that, you know, pick your random hosting provider. I don't know how reliable they are and what it's like to work with them and what flexibility or limitations you'll have with a Windows VPS. So um, given my scenario, and, and then there's also the VPN concern, how do you keep it secure? Given that scenario, I haven't even explored that. But at $300 a month, $3,600 a year, that's more than the cost of one of my desktop class servers every single year. And I only buy a server every three to four years. So it's just not really economical for me. So um, another thing I was thinking, can you develop with BC SaaS sandboxes or demo tenants? Um, maybe, I, I don't know. I haven't really tried it. Um, the Just things off the top of my head is, I don't think you can do that with insider builds, right? Because those are BC SaaS sandboxes. You can't really control the version. 
Um, what if you want to use the BC Test Toolkit or some of those other features that you can get in a Docker environment? And then what if you want to have multiple versions, multiple countries, things like that? I don't know how realistic it is to use BC sandboxes in a SaaS environment for that. So that's, I, I'm assuming no, you'd probably do it in a limited fashion. Uh, maybe you have a remote developer in Ukraine and it's one specific version. Maybe that person could pull off a BC SaaS sandbox. But if you have lots of different scenarios and you're doing Azure DevOps, I don't know how practical that is. So do you need a powerful PC for Business Central development? Essentially, effectively, yes. In, in one form or another, if you're using Docker and if you're hosting a BC server, like you're running instances of BC, those are servers effectively. So in one form or another, you need to have some type of relatively beefy machine that can run a BC server. In the case of Docker, you need so much RAM. If you want fast builds, container builds, or say DevOps build agents, you'll want something powerful. So whether that's a powerful laptop for you, but if you're an organization, you're gonna need multiple laptops. Do you wanna shell out $3,000 plus for five developers? Or do you wanna invest in a server that'll be central and lower the cost of your laptops to say under $2,000 and use remote development over VPN and RDP? I don't know. Or do you wanna go with powerful desktops? Now, I could have my desktop, but what about my develop, remote developer who's a contractor? Does that person need a powerful desktop as well or a laptop? So it starts to get expensive when your endpoints are high end. Now, my approach is powerful server, reliable VPN. I'll spend $2,500 on a desktop class machine that'll last me four years, and I scrap it after four years, and... I spent a couple thousand dollars on a VPN appliance, an enterprise-grade VPN appliance, super reliable, works great, never had a problem with it. Or do you go with expensive hosting and reliable VPN, whether that's Azure, um, AWS, whatever, that's an option. But again, that's expensive. So one form or another, you're going to be spending money, and I don't know how to eliminate that. So... Those are my thoughts. I'm sure there's something I'm missing, but back to my point, I was doing testing of mobile video, mobile live streaming, mobile capture cards, and that was my use case, and that's why I was maxing out my you know, meager CPU and RAM on my three-year-old laptop. But the conversation quickly went towards BC development, which I understand, but for me, I don't think I need or want a $3,000 for BC development. Now, Am I sick of having a throttled laptop? Yes, and so I may be investing in a $3,000 Lenovo P1 so that I am not throttled by CPU anymore. I have plenty of RAM. I can do video capture. I can do live streaming all from a laptop when mobile. I have some other plans I want to support. I want to, other plans I have that that would work well with. So I'm leaning that direction, but it's totally unrelated to BC development. So. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Um, I, what are your thoughts on having an economical setup for business central development, whether you're independent, small business, or you have a few employees? Uh, is there anything I missed or any ideas you might have? And with that, have a good one.